What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. It's Tuesday. It's a new moon today. Oh, you was driving fast, girl. You were driving so fast, honey. Um, so what's going on, y'all? Let me turn off Tupac. Look at this little dog. You better find your way home, Hershey. Look at that little dog. I wonder who his mama is. Honey, the people are at the park. That's why I tell people to come to the park early. So you can get your little play time in. Because the people be coming to the park and you know I you know, you know, you could do what you want, but stay your ass at home, child. So anyways, we talking about um I don't know what's going on with this. We talking about love and hip hop Miami and love and hip hop. Atlanta. I was confused for a second because I told my I told myself, y'all remind me when Love and Hip Hop um Hollywood comes back. I'm not watching that. I'm not. It, that's over with. That's over with. Miami, I can watch Miami again because Miami's giving me good entertainment. Like really legitimately good entertainment, I feel. Um you know, the story with Trick and Joy, you know, even though I don't particularly care for the way it ended, because I would just say, you know, she can still be all of those things for Trick. She doesn't have to. I mean, I guess I guess she can be there for him. She wants to be there for him. I don't know. They're not going to ever be apart. I do like the fact that they're still family in that sense, right? It's like, I think so many times we see relationships between men and women and the people, it's, it's okay, I should say this. It's refreshing to see a couple, no longer a couple, who still care about each other. Like, it's good to see that. Like, it really is. It really is. A lot of people break up. You know, apparently Trick has done some things to her, probably cheated on her and stuff like that, and just never apologized. And that was, she was kept, was holding on to that after so many years, and he finally apologized, right? I finally apologize. Come on, supple face. Um, here we are. Now she can see Diva. Okay, so yeah, so she held on to that for a long time, and you know, Trick finally apologized, and then now, now that he's apologized, now she's like, okay, we can work on our relationship, and that was it. Um. I did post real quick about Omari Hardy, the commissioner who cussed out the mayor of uh, Lake Worth, Florida, Pam Tri Tri Triolo. Triolo. Remember her name when it's time to vote, y'all, because she was turning off y'all electricity down there in Florida and didn't give a damn. Didn't give a damn. And that when I tell you that man advocated for the citizens of that city, honey. He was going off. You're done, honey. Hey, she tried to call a recess for the meeting. He was like, that's not even within your power, girl. Sit down. You need to sit. You're done. She was all in her ego at, at the expense of the livelihood of the citizens in the city that she's the mayor for that they voted for her. But you want to ask for votes. You want to ask for votes, but you want to turn these people... This is probably the last dollar that they had. And they're using it to keep their lights on when you should have just kept their lights on. As you can see, in a capitalistic society, there are a lot of things that can go without us having to pay. A lot of things. Um, yeah, the people out here walking their dogs and stuff. It's perfect. But there's one little dog. He, I guess he ran back to, he looked like a little kind of a terrier Dotson type of mix. Chocolate brown. He's running around. I think he ran back towards his family. Maybe he did. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to be a nosy. So, um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Okay, let me do Love and Hip Hop Miami first since we already talked about Trick and um, Trick and Joy. Trick and Trina have a radio show, which I think is a very good look for the both of them because I think the 
it's a very good look. So Trick's idea, he looked, he seems very excited about it. Remember when they was going on tour and he was not very, um, he didn't want to participate too much. He wasn't giving any ideas and things like that. He wasn't contributing to the creativity or the creative part of the show. But this, he seems to be very excited about. He's like, I've always wanted to be on radio. I am so happy. And apparently if y'all down in Florida, Apparently, Trick and Trina's show does very well. Like, the people are happy that they're on the radio. Um, he tells Trina that he apologized to Joy. She was like, what? You did? What? He was like, yeah, I apologized to her. So, they show Prima Donna, and she's talking to Tip. And Tip, I don't know what you did to your face, but you look like Daffy Duck. It looks that whatever's going on in here is too much in here. And the lips are going up in the bit like a bill of a duck. And it's not attractive. Maybe she needs to grow into her surgery. I don't know. But it's not a good look. It's hard to look at her now. And she didn't always look like that. Um, I don't know. <sighs> The body dysmorphia amongst our people is really, I don't know what we're trying to keep up with. I don't know if it's we're trying to look good for the gram or because people are looking at us. I don't know what, because, you know, if I had the money, I would probably have some surgery. Not probably, I would. I would have some surgery, you know, get my little stomach together and probably do a little fat transfer. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't want to alter my appearance to where I look like a different person. Do you understand what I'm saying? And to me, I find that concerning that so many people, because when you change your body, there is a psychological thing that goes on when you start looking at this person in the mirror and they don't look like the person you've been for the last 30, 40, 50, whatever, how many years you started getting this work done. And now that you know that it can be altered, you keep going back like, oh, let me just do a little bit more. Let me do it. How many nose jobs has Lanethia Leakes had? How many? Like three or four? How many? These this work that these people are doing, I like um Kardashians. What's her name? Kimberly and Chloe and the other one who want who wants to look like Beyonce. That's that's something that's not that's not that's not healthy. I don't care what y'all say. It's body dysmorphia. I don't care what y'all say. When you alter your body to look like a different person, something is not right psychologically. Yes, you can look good on the outside because it's a lot of women running around here. They change their entire bodies and you still getting done wrong. You still being treated like you ain't shit. You still being treated like the product just ro that rolled off of the plastic surgeon's table. You, it doesn't change how you accept treatment. It doesn't change nothing. It just changes your outside. And while that might be happy for you, it still hasn't changed you psychologically. And now you're looking at this person in the mirror who doesn't look like the person you've lived with this whole time. It's really crazy. Like Chloe, Kim, and Kylie. I was watching the trailer for the new season that's coming up. I guess it's like season 17 or some shit. But I was looking at Kim's butt and Chloe's butt. And they've lied to the public that their asses are real. And now y'all legs you really look out, out here and i'm not this is not an opportunity for anybody to get down in the comments and start bashing kim chloe and kylie what i'm talking about is the alteration of their bodies that looks wrong something's wrong with that and now you can't even take your ass out because you didn't told everybody that your ass is real and now your ass and the aesthetics and and what's really crazy a lot of these a lot of these changes in body come from the desire to be desirable to the opposite sex and these men you change your body they don't treat you no different and everybody look alike everybody looks alike and none of y'all getting treated any different you didn't switch up your whole face chloe you didn't switch your whole face to have the aesthetics of the prototype which is a the black woman you went out and changed your hope for, for a black man to treat you like dog shit you know different boo a lot of the times you guys get you guys get caught up in this idea like I'm still white, I'm still non-black and I know these niggas self-esteem is so low and they want to be have this proximity to whiteness but they still want the aesthetics of a black woman. So let me go out and find 
this non-black woman who speaks with AAVE, who has the sh who has altered her body to the shape of the women that I don't want to be with, I still treat her like shit. You ain't no different, okay? You could change your bodies and all of that stuff. Tip, you look, it doesn't look right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It doesn't look right. Amada, they talk about Amada, how Amada did not like that Prima Donna didn't tell her that the girl was coming. She could have told her. She could have told her. But Prima Donna says, you know what? I don't give a damn. Amada is being dramatic. And we know that Amada gives you Negro novelties every time. And I think she does it on purpose. And I was looking at Amada last night and I was like, I'm starting not to really care for her personality. It's this woe is me. Oh my God, I'm just so damsel in distress. I don't know what's going on. I love my man, but I don't like the fact that you came over here with this woman. You can, you didn't even tell me. Girl, just like Prima Donna said, bitch, you was looking for an excuse to get rid of that nigga because you really want a baller. And you fucked up and got a nigga with a baller hat. And that's where you fucked up, bitch. <laughs> because, bitch, at MJ, and then, and then Shay later on is pleading the case for her brother, girl. Would you, would you, if your brother wasn't your brother, would you date his broke ass? Bitch, why are you trying to get somebody else to date him? The fuck out of here. She was like, and then what Prima Donna did that just really left a bad taste in my mouth she was like i need to talk to mj what you need to talk to mj for bitch you had already had this girl break up with mj well i just want to let him know that that it wasn't really us that the bitch was really just trying to break up with him because he's broke but now you feel sorry for him girl shut up prima donna shut your ass up trick and joy she come over she says she's gonna make some food for him trying to get him healthy aj johnson comes out in this Cirque du Soleil outfit. I don't know what she had on. I don't know what the she had on. Jo, um, AJ Johnson, you know from kid from um, House Party, and she she turned around and became like a fitness personal life coach. She you know got her body together. She looks very strong and all this other stuff. So she's known Trick and um, Trick and Joy for a minute, and she's saying to them that there's a lot of love, there's a lot of pain, and there's a lot of love there and all this other stuff, and you know, they trying to, I don't know, it was really weird, they were acting very juvenile, it's almost as though they couldn't tell each other, like Joy couldn't tell Trick, like I care about you, that's the reason why I am concerned about your eating habits, he had pickled, a jar of pickled eggs, like the jar in the, in the damn liquor store, you know the corner store, and they be having the jars, in the of pickled eggs and pickled hot dogs he had that in his refrigerator y'all ugh that is so gross to me i'm sorry i i don't know if they good or not the most things that i like pickled is like of course jalapenos and carrots and onions and um what else do i like pickled ginger not no eggs. I wonder what that tastes like. That's just doesn't, and it's like sitting in some red juice. I don't know why it's, why is the juice red? I don't know. Anyway, so AJ was just like, you know, Joy at one time was like, cause, cause you know, of course Trick was resistant. And at one point Joy was like, look, that's not my fault. It feels like I'm getting blamed cause you look like you pregnant. <laughs> Like Joy, Joy, she was like, "Cause I don't look pregnant." <laughs> Trick stomach is big, but yeah, you eating a bunch of shit. And how you a cook and you still? But when they came, when they shot, when they shot, when they started the scene, he was in the kitchen and he was putting salt, some type of seasoning. It looked like salt in this jar, in this pan or this pot. Um, child, I have to put zip this. It was getting getting on my nerves. Um trying to um cook and he was pouring a gang of salt in this pot i don't know what was what he was doing but um he was like these hoes don't care i said come on trick they sure don't because you had a one that was was willing to sleep with you and she didn't even like you what's the girl's name what was that girl's name we didn't forgot her name already see but these hoes like it somebody like it trick said somebody he somebody like it he told joy um he was like, she doesn't care about my hurt. And then Joy got mad. She was like, don't lie on me. Don't say that I don't care about you. Don't do that. Don't say that I don't care about you. Don't say this and that. So 
they were like, why, why are you concerned, Joy? Why are you concerned about Trick? And she was like, because, you know, I want to, I want, she started naming off all of these things. Girl, I want to see him. I want to see him um, win. I, you know, we have God children and we have this and we have that. And she was saying everything except for be, I love because I love him. And he was like, yeah, see, she care about everything else, but she don't care. I love her, but she don't love me. That's what he said. And she was like, whatever, like that. So, you know, later on, they end up at the end of the, the you know, it was a season finale. So at the end of the episode, she goes up to him and she was like, are you going to take care of yourself? And he was like, yeah. And he was, he was like, okay, well, you know, I, I see that we can work. We can try and work on something. So Joy and Trick are going to try and work on something. Hopefully they give them their own show because I think it will be great. Like literally, I don't know what it is about Trick Daddy. He's ignorant as hell. But... It's something endearing about him. I don't know what it is. What sign is Trick Daddy? I don't know what it is. Um, but there's something endearing about Trick Daddy Dallas. He's so ignorant though. But, you know, maybe it's just seeing him, you know, express his love for joy, you know, and hopefully, you know, and it's sad because it takes a person to get sick and realize that they need the person who's been holding them down for all of these years and all this time and who really wants to see them healthy. And he was like, I don't think I would ever, I could not replace you. There's no woman that can replace you. No woman can, you know? And I was like, okay, trick, whatever. We'll see. Trick daddy. Hold on. Trick daddy. And then it was something that he was saying. So is trick Jamaican Maurice Samuel. He says, I'm American. I'm American. Trick daddy dollars. He is a Libra. He's only 45. Wow. Trick Daddy Dollar. He got 10 brothers and sisters. So you know they got a lot of nieces. He know you know you got a lot of nieces and nephews and stuff like that. So hopefully him and Joy get their shit together. Sukiana was showing with her children. And she was talking to her children in a very healthy way, explaining to them that their mother does not have the typical kind of job. The job requires her to be away from them at, you know, times. And they were like, we miss you and this and that. And she was like, okay, you know, but th I'm doing this stuff for you. I think you, I think it was actually a good talk she had with her children. As ignorant as her ass is, she had a great, a great talk with her children um <clears throat> hood brat and kenny now kenny is the one that he was with hood brat they was living together turned out he's married and has a wife and still lives with her so he comes to her and he's like look i i i'm in a marriage but i'm not in a relationship with her we're just married so this is not you know what it is so i she seemed like she was very adamant like I don't date, date married men. You lied to me. You, I opened up myself to you. I told you I was vulnerable with you. And you were sitting here the whole time lying to me. So I don't know if I can trust you like that. Because I was really being real with you. And you were not being real with me. And I think that's a real... When that happens in a relationship, whether it's with a friend, whether it's with a parent, whether it's with a... It's a romantic. When some, when you feel like you've been vulnerable with a person and it comes out that they've been lying and you're like, damn, okay, well, what else they've been lying about? You understand what I'm saying? So... I hope that she's, you know, I always hope that these women, you know, stay strong in their stance about not getting with someone because they've lied to them, but they always go back. So I, I really can't, you know, I hope she, you know, sticks to it, but I doubt that she will. I doubt that she will. I mean, that seems like the trend <clears throat> and all these things like I've yet y'all name me a woman who said, no, that's it. I'm not dealing with this fuck shit and was out. Look at Amara. You right back. Right back in the folds of being hustled. And you're just, for what? Like, for what? I was just like, you so stupid. I was looking at Amara like, you are fucking stupid. Period. Like, I hate to call the girl stupid, but your actions, everything that you're doing is dumb. And then you're, I don't know. Shay and Prima Donna, they go into Trick and Trina's launch party for their radio show. 
um, Shay and Prima Donna start talking. She was like, that's my brother. I know I'm really not supposed to be involved in this, but that's my brother. Tell me what happened. She was like, well, we brought his ex-girlfriend, Annie. Well, what you bringing Annie around for? That, that was 10 years ago. Bitch, don't matter. When you go for a job, don't you want them to take into account the experience from 10 years ago? Okay, well, bitch, 10 years ago is still relevant to how a person treats their next person. I don't give a damn. Behaviors don't change. I don't give a damn. And just like that girl told her, you are, he is going to make himself to where you miss him. He's going to do so much shit for you, just living off of you and siphoning your money and just using you that you, when he's gone, you're going to feel like you need him. And that's what Amada is going through right now. Uh, I'm not going to be able to talk about um, housewife. I mean... Atlanta. We're going to have to come back for Atlanta. Briscoe's talking about his girl. And when he was talking about his girl to Trick, Trick was looking off in the distance like, dang, okay. I mean, I need to get my shit together. And so the guy, she was like, yeah, we're going to go on a double date. This is Trick. We're going to go on a double date. You, your girl, and me enjoy. When did you enjoy we get together? <laughs> we looking like, what you talking about me and Joy? Anyways. The seagulls are fighting over bread, girl. Um, MJ was there. Amada and Shay. She was like, Shay was like, there's hope. Um, he's good enough for everything else. But when you ready to move on. So when Prima Donna started talking to Shay, she told Shay, she was looking for an excuse to break up with your brother. And we just gave her an out. She Because the way that she responded, we saw the way she responded, went in there hollering and screaming, kicked him out so fast, didn't have a conversation with the nigga at all, and now you're regretful, right? So she was like, oh, okay, I figured. Shay was like, I figured she wanted a way out. And that's the reason why it happened so fast. But... um. I don't know why Shay or why Prima Donna wanted to get involved so much, like wanting to talk to MJ. And MJ's like, I'm standing by my woman. I'm standing by my woman. This gonna be my wife. This gonna be my wife. Shut your stupid ass up. Oh my God. This gonna be my wife. This gonna be my wife. Yeah, as soon as you can afford a, a ring. Ugh. I was like, this is so gross. She was like, bye Telemundo. She kept calling her Telemundo. And you was right on par with calling that bitch Telemundo because she's so dramatic. She does the extras. And it's just like, and then Amada got so mad. She was like yelling and screaming. They was like, why are you doing all this at Trick and Trina's party? Y'all doing the most. But I don't know why they showed or why Amada and MJ. I don't, whatever. To each his own, girl, they always go back. They always can go back. At the end of the episode, they show Trick and Joy looking through a photo album in two, 2020. Looking at through a photo album, I guess, whatever. Um, what I think I have a little time to talk about. I didn't take many notes. Um... I didn't take many notes. I stopped after Sierra and Bambi went looking for clothes. And Bambi is in 2020 still talking about Shimmer. Girl. Carly was evidently in an abusive relationship. We've all said that when I talked about it the other day. I called it her abusive relationship. That's exactly what it is. And Mo is a con man. Probably not unlike MJ. They get these... And Carly, you know, you want to say, bitch, you 50 years old. You still letting these niggas run game on you to the point where you marry you 50 girl this is some shit you 20 30 like in your early 30s late 20s early 20s like let you know this is where you do stuff like this carly and i i am i am i would hate that carly did this because carly is now that bitch is an actress now when we talk about these bitches acting Carly wants to be an actress. She's so dramatic. Everything is so dramatic. It's it's just and it's like I would it would it would really be disappointing that if she went out and married this man, he started to become violent. I guess Alexa Sky sent shooters after them to get their money back cuz somebody put a gun to Carly's head. She was like, "Oh girl, I'm sorry. I didn't know they did that." Like, <laughs> what? 
I'm sorry, girl. I didn't know they went that far. Yes, bitch, they put a gun to my head trying to get money out of Mo because he didn't he didn't took money out of Alexis Scott. How are you involved? How are you involved with these two people who just so happen to be included in the same franchise? I, I just don't I don't even know how to like I don't even know if I even wanted like the energy to to to, to analyze these stories. It's like I don't know. I, I'm 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 cool on Carly. Like I don't know. It's she, you're just too old. She said he had a prostitute in her bed. Um, Erica and Rashida had on the same outfit in the funeral home or the same jacket. I don't understand. Light skinned Keisha. Um, apparently, Scrappy doesn't speak to her because Bambi's. <laughs> Scrappy doesn't speak to light skin Keisha. Yes, girl, light skin Keisha. Doesn't speak to light skin Keisha because Bambi's friend used to mess with light skin, was with light skin Keisha's boyfriend. And light skin Keisha's boyfriend, who used to be Bambi's friend's boyfriend, cheated on Bambi's friend with light skin Keisha. So Bambi doesn't want Scrappy around broads like her. Hmm. Interesting. What's you in the hot tub with Rashida's husband? Knowing that he was married. Was that you, Bambi? Hmm. With Benzino and Bobby Valentino. Hmm. Sierra goes to court. I don't know why Shooter shows up. I really don't understand. Um, that was to me, I would have wanted to fight him. Like, you telling me you can't come come inside the court to speak for, for me, but you're going to come on the outside to see me in? Like, get out of here. Like, I wanted to punch him in his face. Like, why are you doing that? Um, Akbar and Alexis say, you need to talk to Carly. Akbar was like, you was wrong for that. You realize you handle it all wrong. Um, she said that Mo got close to her family and stole money from her family. Um, I guess trying to tell them that he was creating a truck driving type of situation. Who else was on? Oh, wasn't Todd doing like a truck drive, bought some trucks to be doing truck driving to Todd Burris? Yes. So I wonder if this is in Atlanta, right? And Mo was scamming people out of truck driving investment money he's she just basically married a con man who has a low self-esteem and likes to beat on women like the worst type of nigga like the worst um carly is going to get a divorce she goes and sees a divorce attorney um uh, mama d and ernest are still together remember i couldn't remember his name i was calling him earl his name is ernest they still together she's still giving him the blues um jock he played they played into him you know being a car ride sharing driver like a lift driver or whatever he called it pull up and go that's what he called it i don't know but they're talking to mama d about her alcoholism and saying that she needs to get that together um sierra and bambi i think oh yeah okay so then they showed um sierra had a party and at this jewelry store which is cute i thought it was a cute idea she had this party at this jewelry store and then carly shows up and she was like carly so sierra had been drinking she's admitted she's been drinking a lot to self-medicate during these trying times in the last two years she's been going through this court case so carly gets there and she was like carly you didn't come to the court she was like you told me the wrong court courthouse i would be i would have been mad if i asked a friend to come to court for me um and then carly was like well you obviously she got a continuance because she's on instagram posting pictures so obviously she's okay that's not the point the point is you were supposed to show up for the girl and you acted like oh she's she's not picking up i just keep calling her she's not picking up. i was like carly i, I just think that maybe carly maybe you attracted a con man because you a calm person a calm woman maybe that's why you attracted a con man and maybe he just got he got the best of you because you a con you a con woman to me like you conning everybody on the down to this tv screen i'm looking at her like carly you are a joke i'm sorry i'm sorry carly red gives us laughs and entertainment but it's just too dramatic why don't you just play the bone carrier like you've been playing why this marry with this man and stuff anyway so i gotta go y'all in a second um Sierra says Carly's over there talking mess because she saw her. well 
I could, she, I told her, I don't know, Carly was mad at Sierra for some reason saying that Sierra doesn't support her the way she expects for Sierra to support her, for Carly to support her. And she was like, I hear her, I see her, I can see, I'm reading her lips, I see what she's talking over there, talking shit. So she walked over there and she was like, girl, what are you saying? Carly was like, I'm going to be there for you. I know that you're mad at me. I know you're upset at me. I'm going to be there for you and blah, blah, blah. You're upset now, da, da, da. Honey, Sierra mushed Carly, and that wasn't fake. She put her whole hand in her face and was like, blah. I was like, oh, okay, girl. She was like, Carly, I already got one charge. Don't make me get another charge. And she was already drunk, and she mushed her in the face. So if Carly wanted to file an assault charge on you, bitch, the same bitch you was trying to get for to be a witness for you, you just totally threw that in the trash. Like, what the hell is wrong with you, Sierra? She was drunk, whatever. Y'all gonna have to learn how to, I don't know, hold yourselves accountable because the shit is crazy. Um, that was pretty much it, y'all. I don't have anything else to talk about. I did post on my community page the video of when, because remember, I saw some comments talking about that Nini and Kenya don't have the same story because Nini's mother was in her life for a certain amount of time but Kenya's mother never held her and gave her away so they're different in that respect the point is they were not raised by their maternal caregivers and abandoned by their maternal caregivers so what I did was went back to whatever season they had on the all white where Nini was where 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 Kenya is telling Nini, I care about you. We are more alike than you care to 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 understand. We both were abandoned by our mothers, and Nini starts to break down and says, "I don't want to talk about my mother." But it's okay to use it as an insult for somebody else. That's the shit I'm talking about. That's the shit I'm talking about. Everybody else does anybody else equate Nini's behavior to the fact that her mother abandoned her? Does anybody equate Marlo's behavior because her mother abandoned her? Why is it the, the, the foundation for the way that Kenya treats people? Now, it might be. It is. Because how we are relationships with our mother is how we relate to other women. The relationships with our fathers is how we relate to other men. And it's true. Trust me. Now, are we not... Are we not taking in the, into the account that this pain that Nini expresses in, in a way that comes out as rage and jealousy and all that stuff? Are we saying that, oh, it's because her mama left her? Because that seems to be the go-to for this lady and, and, the, and, and the diagnosis for her behavior, but not the diagnosis for these other two women who seem to keep coming at her and they seem to have a problem with her. Marlo, we can get, I don't know about Nini and, and, and Kenya. I don't know if they could ever be friends. It doesn't look like they will. We don't know. I mean, Kenya is talking to somebody that physically assaulted her, Portia, right? So she might talk to Nini because Nini has never assaulted her she's only called her names you know what i'm saying you know talking about the the buffalo comment but to me if you put your hands on me that's that's it i don't even understand how they can sit in the same room together let alone actually talk to each other but we see that P portia she ain't shit anyways but that's it y'all so go look on the community page i posted the, the link on where Nini and Nini and Cynthia were talking about how Cynthia, how she tried to take food off of Cynthia's table, right? So y'all, because it's kind of giving you some context because I think a lot of people forget that, you know, they, they keep comparing Cynthia and Kenya's relationship and it was nothing like her and Nini. Nini wanted kitten, Cynthia fired. She wanted to take food off her table. And when Cynthia confronted Nini about it, Nini wants to be sarcastic and do all of these things. And all of these things have, you know, historical context to the relationship. So you got to understand. But Kenya was really being nice, whether she was acting or not. She was being nice to, to Nini. Go watch it. I put it in the community page. I put it in the community page. I'm out of here, y'all. I got to go. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Um, we'll get down in the comments. 
I'm going to put a thing so we can have some topics to discuss tomorrow. I, I was trying to watch the Madam C.J. Walker. Um, I was trying to watch the Madam C.J. Walker story, but there's so many people saying that it's just blatantly. It's all, it's really just for entertainment. Do not watch it for his for to have a history lesson on Madam C.J. Walker. A lot of people are saying that she was not the first black woman millionaire. That Annie Malone was the first. Mahone Malone was the first who was the mentor to see to Madam C.J. Walker. Chronicle Speaks did a great um, synopsis of everything. Like she did, she did a really good job, really good job. But I think um, Kimberly Foster at Fort Harriet, she was really upset about it. So she said she's going to make a video about it. Um, so I was on the second episode. It seemed good for me. Yeah, Tiffany Haddish. We can do without Tiffany Haddish being casted as Tiffany Haddish because um, it's it's tired. It's old. It's really tired. I'm. You know, I'm not really a big fan of Tiffany. I don't, I say like I, her comedy is not my thing. Her style of comedy is not my thing. But um, yeah, I was trying to watch that and I was like, I don't even want to watch it now. But you know, I want to support Octavia Spencer, um, you know, because she, she is really a good actress. Um, so I guess we can watch it. Blair Underwood is in it. We saw Bill Bellamy in it. Um, and it's only four episodes, I guess. So I, that, it turned me off. That's why I really don't like to go online because I want to watch a lot of the things. Oh my God. We spend so much time. I know it's important. Historic history, right? Historical context is very important, especially if this, this is the first time that people are seeing Madam CJ Walker's story. Right. But at the same time, um, it needs to be factual. If people are going to be learning from this, it needs to be factual. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not fair that, and then you want to play like this woman was light skinned. And so it was this a light skinned girl against the dark skinned girl. And she stole her, her formula and she was bitter the whole time and all this other stuff. And that was not true. It was not true. So go watch Chronicle speak story about it. Um, they just did not really do a good job. So I, hey, I, I know it's important, but sometimes I like to watch things for entertainment. But I'm not going to watch nothing for entertainment purposes. And the story is supposed to be based on actual events, and it's not. And, you know, that's not... I like documentaries and stuff like that. Because I know that what I'm seeing, this is real, right? This is not for entertainment purposes. This is not, you know... How do they say when they change things in a movie for for dramatics, you know adding pieces of story you know whatever anyways i gotta go talk to y'all later let's get down in the comments um protect your energy